need to switch it to gym. Oh, hold on. Switch to, to gym. How do I do this? Okay, did it. Okay. Okay, and then I want to. Uh, I think I'm all almost. Yep, almost ready. Almost. Okay, that goes here, that goes here. Switch to the gym and then I mute Sakina. Sakina mutes here and mute there. Okay, I'm ready. All right, today is, um, hello, today is May 19, 2017 and we're recording their uh, introduction to Galactic Reiki with uh, the Cur. Very good. Oh, hold on. I lost you guys. Hold on one second. Okay. I don't know what I did, but I I lost you. But I still hear you. So, oh, there you are. Got your back. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Hello. Who do we have there? Uh, only me and Sakina. I see other people. Uh, it's two Sakinas. No. I oh, you do? Oh, yes. We have tons of other people. I just... Uh, okay. There's right. more people than that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, they're hidden from my screen. Okay. <laughs> I need to unhide them somehow. Okay. But... So that's all right. Hello, yes. Uh, hey, Eva. E Eva. Hey, Eva. Hey, Kim. Nice to have you. All right. And Carolyn, I can't I can't see your face, but I can see your name. Nice. Is that you, Liney? Uh, you... I'm I'm not sure. Is it Caroline Liney or is it Caroline someone else? Carolyn someone else. I don't know. All right. And I can see Kim Chin's name. Uh-huh. Hey, Hello. hey Kim, nice to meet you Hi. face to face. Don't bother Hello. Me. Don't come here. Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> This should be interesting. I have no idea what Takur is going to be talking about with for the introduction. So it should be interesting. Because <laughs> I have uh, very little information on what she's going to do for an introduction. I have some of the symbols and I have some of the uh, things she's going to teach. Perhaps she's going to just... I, I think she's going to do a little history of something, but I'm not sure. It is me, by the way, Jim. Oh, hi. I can hear the voice. Yeah, it is Liney. <laughs> oh, Liney. How are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm good. I just had a problem, um, so I had to. Um, I'm on my phone, so I had oh. to um, change my set my settings. Okay, I see. Well, welcome. Good to he good to hear your voice. Thank you. Good to see you, Jim. All right, and I think he's preparing to do recording. Oh, I'm, I'm all set. I'm all good. Okay. 
So go ahead with your introductions if you're ready. Or oh, the, once the more? I already did it. Okay, let me do it oh. again. Oh, all wait, right. I didn't do it. I didn't hear it. Oh, all right. Starting over. Um, there is no easy way of doing it. Hold on. All right. Starting over. Hello. Welcome. Today is May 19th, 2017, and we have Introduction to Galactic Reiki by Tecur, channel by Jim. And we have with us um, Eva, Kim, Sakina, and Laini. And one more person who is April. Hey, April too. And, uh, and Jim. Hello. Hello. All right, today um, Takur is going to be giving a little introduction on Galactic Reiki, which is going to be taught at the um, workshop in August. I'm not sure if there will be any other presentation or information before then, but uh, at this point, uh, she's going to be giving an introduction to, uh, from what I understand, she wants to do a little bit of history on some of where some of the symbols come from and why they are using certain symbols for the galactic reiki and uh, that kind of information so um, with no further uh, delay <laughs> I will bring uh, the car in hold on I'm going to take another drink of water and we shall see We shall see what is going on. Have a wonderful session, everybody. I'm sure she'll have give you a chance to ask some questions because uh, this is sort of sprung on her. She said she wasn't quite ready, but she's she she thinks she'll be able to go through. All right, very good. Wonderful, thank you. All righty, and I will do a little meditation and bring Takur to you. Have fun, everybody. Thank you. Greetings. I am Takur. Welcome, Takur. Thank you for coming. And thank you for having me. I am going to do a short introduction on Galactic Reiki. Now, I am sure some of you are wondering what Galactic Reiki even is. Let me explain how it has come about that we are going to train Galactic Reiki. First of all, we have colonies, as you know, and the newest of the colonies is Colony 6. And the, on Colony 6 is where we do healing. This colony has been around since last year. I'm not sure, around October, September, some around that time, uh, it started to become a serious part of the colonies, and people started to request to go to that colony. At this colony, we worked on different healing modalities that helped humanity, that helped other species, and that were able to be used for uh, wellness within the galactic area. We learned which things could be used for humans, and we learned which things did not really work very well on earth meaning that sometimes there are certain uh healing symbols or healing energies that are not compatible with earth energies and so 
those ones were discarded for the for the teaching of galactic Reiki for humans. But what we had learned is there is a few symbols that are very prevalent throughout the galaxy and work pretty much everywhere. And the reason for this is because they are very, very ancient and they call on uh, universal energies. Now, there is, before I go any farther, I would like to say the energies of the earth have changed since 2014, the end of the year, 2014, where you had the blood moons, the all the different anomalies happening at one time, or all the different uh, ex, uh, events, I, uh, blood moons, you had uh, eclipses, you had Yom Kippur, you had uh, uh, equinoxes, etc., all happening pretty much right one on top of the other. And this caused a great change in the Earth energies. And it has been noted even by scientists on your planet that your Earth energies have changed. Also, they have made the discovery that all things are made of energy, and they're starting to report that. But uh, energy healing is something that is very important to this day and age and to the belief systems of people on your planet. You see, I believe that most uh, of the humans on your planet believe that uh, energy healing is only an alternative kind of medication, whereas it is actually a very strong and capable uh, kind of healing process and healing modality. So let us jump in there, and I can tell you first about the most ancient of all the galactic symbols, which is the spiral. The spiral has been used for over a million years, as far as we know. It's been, it's come from distant galaxies. It's been used in this galaxy. It's um, been shared with different um, species all through the different galaxies that we have uh, learned about. And the reason that the spiral is so effective is because it is the representation of a vortex. Now, you have spirals in your earthly Asui Reiki, which is the Chokure. Are, are any of you um, familiar with the Chokure? Yes, I see some people uh, nodding and some smiles. But the Choku Rei, if you, if you are a Reiki student or have taken Reiki 2, Reiki 1 does not show this symbol, but Reiki 2, Asui Reiki 2, shows that um, the, the Choku Rei symbol comes around three times and meets at the center. It is the beginning of a vortex. And you do it three times in Asui Reiki. I, they go chokure, chokure, chokure. It means bring the energy here or bring the energy all over here. It, it, you can bring it to a specific spot or you can bring it to a large area. This is um, the, your earthly symbol of the spiral that has been brought down through the generations from galaxy to galaxy. There are different galactic spirals, such as the deep healing Choku Ray, which is many spirals. It goes at least 12 spirals in, which is a deep, a deep spiraling effect for deep healing for bones, deep muscle tissue, and things of that nature, which was introduced uh, a while ago in one of the Reikis that I taught on Earth. And there is also the long-lasting Choku Rei, which is a, 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 uh, 
an embellishment of the ordinary chokure, but on the last chokure, it goes around six times. Now, let me tell you a little bit about why the spiral is so effective in all, all galactic and all inter um, or universal uh, healing energies. When using a spiral, your intention is to bring energy into that area, to bring something that is not there into an area that, is, that needs help. Remember, if every time you're doing a circle, you can move it inward, it, it seems to be linear. What I mean by linear is that when you make the symbol, it's flat. It, it does not seem to be like a vortex, but it, but when you are intentioning it to move into the body or bring energy to an area, it becomes more dynamic and three-dimensional. Does that make sense to you? Yes, thank you. So, well, so actually, when you're doing your spirals, they are not linear or flat, but you are making them actually intentioning them to bring energy in. So that is why that is a vortex. It brings this energy into an area that needs healing. And when you're intentioning that energy comes during healing, of course, it's going to be healing energy, something very positive. Now, what has also been learned about these particular spirals is that they can be used in many, many different ways. Uh, the spiral can be used also to remove things from the body that do not, does not belong there. And it's all a part of the intention. You can actually go in the opposite direction and pull out, spiral out of the, of the being Things that do not belong there. Now, what am I talking about? Sometimes you may find that people have blockages or people have things in their system that do not belong there, M deep toxins, or they may have uh, negative energies or something that whenever you are an energy healer, you realize that there's something there that doesn't belong there. Now, be careful uh, not to work on the chakras without being a, an expertise on that. You can very much mess up the chakras if you, if you do not know what you're doing and you work on the chakras. But if you know how to work on the chakras, then by all means, you can be very helpful. However, please, please do not work on the chakras with energy fields if you do not know what you're doing. Now, but what I am talking about in removing energy is the intention of removing can pull out by vortex also. You see, you can go in and bring energy and positive energy into an area. And also you can pull out and bring negative energy out or something that does not belong there out of the system. So this is the greatest understandings of spirals that the galactic has to offer. And there are many symbols that have spirals in them. There are, there is uh, more than one Asui Reiki symbol that does have uh, the spiral in the uh, the sir, is it called the fire serpent? Or that is the name for that. Yes. Yes. the The fire serpent is put in for teachers, and it it is putting energy into the individual for uh, learning how to. Uh, it is a part of the attunement for teachers at the highest level to learn how to do teaching. And it brings the energy of those kinds of learnings 
and solidifies it within the being. It makes all the symbols work together in a greater way and learn, uh, teaches them how to bring forth the information in a greater way. So that is a beautiful energy. And so the spiral is going to be a very important thing that will be taught in the galactic Reiki. You do have some of it in a Sui Reiki, and there is going to be uh, more galactic symbols with spirals in when you learn galactic Reiki. Are there any questions to this point? Yes. Um, what about clockwise, counterclockwise? Yes. Now, you know, sometime, that is a very good question, Max. And whenever you're doing your intentions for Reiki, you, you, when you're doing the Chuka Ray, it's going counterclockwise into the person. Is that correct? When you do the Choku Ray, it is counterclockwise. I so that would be putting the energy into that person. So it would seem to fit that when you're taking energy out, you would go the opposite direction. You would pull out clockwise. However, many people have discovered that for their own system, clockwise is in and counterclockwise is out. So before you even start your Reiki session, determine which, what uh, direction your spirals are going to put energy in and take energy out. It's very important. Most of the time, people will realize they do not have to take energy out at all. Most people are fine. They do not have negative energy places. They do not need that kind of spiral effect to, uh, to help them with their healing. But in case you do run into it, please determine that ahead of time, which way your spiral will be going to put energy in and which way your spiral will be going to take energy out. We will teach you that in Galactic Reiki, but it is not something that is part of a Sui Reiki at this time. There is no taking out of energy in a Sui Reiki. Is that correct, Max? Uh, can you repeat? I said there is no uh, teachings in a Sui Reiki of taking energy out with spiraling. Um, we teach it in, uh, in master level. In the master level. Mm -hmm. It's part of the master teaching. All right. Very well. We will also teach that in Galactic Reiki because it is important be because energies can be re removed. Now, also I wanted to mention, I was telling you about the chakras, that you should not use, you should not work on the chakras unless you know what you're doing because the chakras are the energy centers of the body. And I wanted to go into a little bit more detail about that because there are teachings of how to brighten the chakras and put energy into them using the spirals, but that will be taught later. But if you do not know how to do that, please do not work on someone's chakras. If you do not know what you are doing, it can be very harmful. Any more questions? Wendy? Very well. Uh, Wendy there wanted to are... speak. Um, hold on a second. Wendy, you are yes. muted now. Okay, go ahead. I can't hear you. Okay. We cannot hear you. I guess try typing and I will read your, 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 um, your comment. Put your microphone on. Is it on? It's on, but I can't hear you anyway. I do not see that she has a muted microphone, so right. I do not know what her problem is. Let me ask my question first. Um, what about going from inside out of the spiral or from outside in? So you have four options. You can go counterclockwise, outside, in, or inside out. Or you can go to clockwise, outside, in, or inside out. What are the Correct. options? you must determine 
what you're what you are doing and uh only in your intention and your determination of how the the uh spirals are working for you individually may you work on them so if you can go outside in inside out it does not matter as long as your you have your spirals working correctly for you they can work um either direction for good positive or or bringing things out you just have to determine and know what which is which and what is going on with your 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 healing work thank you um i also wanted to ask about working with a pendulum it's yeah. also can make a a, a spinning mo motion and i i saw people doing that but i, I wasn't taught how do you can how can you heal with a pendulum a pendulum can be used the same it uses a spiral effect as you notice when you hold the pendulum and you ask it what yes you have to determine your yes and no on the pendulum the pendulum is limited to uh, some degree in healing effect because you are not using all the energy from the body or the hands or uh, all those things, but it is able to bring some energy, especially it's used for work with the chakras, not to overpower the chakral uh, intention. So it can be used to determine uh, positive and negative. Uh, does everybody know how to use a, a pendulum? Does anybody not know how to use a pendulum? <clears throat> if you do not know how to use a pendulum, let me know because you must know what I am talking about in order to to get it right. Very well. Then you know how to use it to find your yes, and you know how to use it to find your no. And then uh, when you are working on chakras, you use it to spin the chakras. Some people instead of using their hands to spin the chakras or to brighten them or use their own personal energy on the chakras, they can use the pendulum to brighten the chakras if that is necessary. It's a much lighter form of energy work with the chakras and it uh, does not affect or um, use the energy as strongly as the hands would be so yes uh, you can use the pendulum to brighten chakras you can use the pendulum for other things but i am not sure what you were referring to on in the reiki sense uh, i was thinking that I, I saw people just to use a pendulum to actually uh do the treatment to um i guess it to spin the energy i guess that's what was the intention but i don't know the details i didn't speak i didn't discuss what they actually did i just saw they doing intention that. they intention the pendulum to do the work that the hands would do i would assume and it it is effective but it is a in my opinion a lighter form of energy a slightly different form because you're using the stone that's at the end there are different stones you can use for pendulums and some of them are very good for healing work and others are not as good a rose quartz would be a good one for healing work whereas perhaps a different kind of stone may not be as effective thank you any other questions I, I see that Wendy still has a question, but we cannot hear her. I wonder what is happening with her volume. There, we cannot hear you, dear. Um, until we can hear you, I will move forward. I'm sorry. <laughs> Very sorry, dear. Um, all right, then. There is other things, there is other symbols that you will also learn. I will do, there are some symbols on your planet now that were part of Asui Reiki 
that since the energies have changed, have also changed, they are not as powerful as they used to be. The Seiheiki, you know what symbol I speak of. The Seiheiki is no longer as strong as it used to be because the, the energies of your planet have changed so drastically. Emotions, uh, you deal with emotional changes and energies in a slightly different way now. So we will give you a galactic symbol to replace that. But the Seiheiki is still used and has some effect, but it is not as powerful as it used to be. It is, has been weakened by the energy changes on the Earth. Now, also, the, the larger of the symbols that have much movement, the Han Shose Shonen and the, the Yusui Daikomio also have uh, been weakened in some forms. The Tibetan Daikomio has actually increased in energy, and the Yusui has actually decreased in some ways because of it is more of a symbol of just for the planet rather than it is a symbol of the Earth energies at this time. So we will bring you something uh, that will be a little bit more effective. The other symbols are still working quite well. Any questions about that? All right, very well. Um, we will be showing you, I, well, I will be teaching it, but um, I have had many, much help from my colleagues uh, getting all this information together. So I say we because it is, has been a group effort for us to get this information together. We have worked very hard to bring the most effective symbols to the galactic Reiki as we can. Now, let me say this at this time. It will not replace any of your Earth modali modalities completely, but it will just be an option to be able to be used. And many of the symbols that we are going to teach you in uh, Galactic Reiki, Reiki are symbols that have been used for centuries. In fact, a million, the spiral, like I said, over a million years. It goes back into great antiquity, probably as long as uh, uh, healing modalities have been around, the spiral has been around. So, um, but we will show you some very powerful galactic symbols. We will show you some new ones that will help with, uh, some will help with head problems such as headaches or things that are uh, in the head. Some, uh, it helps with straightening out confusion and things of this nature because it brings the, uh, the brain back into a a, 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 an energy field that is able to be worked with a, a little easier. So we'll be showing you symbols for that. We'll be showing you symbols that will be for, um, uh, there is an earth symbol that uh, Mother Earth has taught the Aquarian fire people that we will al also be showing you called the Rainbow Pyramid which is good for balancing energy fields and chakras. And that is a very, a new, a very new symbol, but is very powerful and has been very helpful. Uh, we, sh we have um, other different varieties of symbols that we will be training that will help you with different things. Any questions right at the moment? Is there any kind of symbol that you are aware of that you would like to be taught that it has not been taught to you? A kind of symbol that is good for a particular kind of illness, perhaps. Because we are also working on, there are so, so many different ways to, to present this class. And we're going to try to whittle it down to just the most effective things. I'm and that is what, what we are trying to do.
I'm very attracted to angelic symbols, but I guess uh, maybe you might want to start with uh, Liren. Liren, there is a couple Liren sy mm -hmm. symbols that will be put in there. Um, uh, there is a couple grounding symbols for from the Liren culture that are effective in the Earth culture that I will be showing. Um, that has never been presented in a class before, and that should be very interesting for you. Um, there are some symbols about, um, well, the Tinch Che is also a spiral symbol, but it can be used in so many ways. It can be used in four uh, different ways. I remember you just asked about how to use spirals you can use spirals going in and out from the outside in, from the inside out. And that is a tinch che is a symbol that can be used for grounding, for, move, for bringing thought processes up to the next dimension, for clearing uh, of a room of negative energy, or for energy balancing in a room, or, or for just clear, uh, uh, not for clearing it as much as balancing it. If you find that you're in a place that just seems not quite right, you can balance out the room. And the tinch che can you be used in these four different ways. And it is the same symbol, but used in a different way. You will see, it will go, uh, we will show you how to use that. Any questions about that? occur yes um are the spiral symbols the most powerful ones yes okay and um, what about um symbols like um pen uh, pentacle and like crescent moon things like that do they oh, do anything the, um, um they those are very powerful but those are earth symbols you see i'm looking we were looking for symbols that transcend one uh, part of the universe and uh, are universal in, they, they can be used everywhere. The pentangle, the pentacle or the pentagram and all those things are actually more powerful on earth than they are in other places because they are imitators, imitations of the human body in some ways. They represent the human body, the head, the arms, and the legs. Now, they might be effective on some other places where there are bipedal peoples or, or things of that nature or those that stand upright and have arms and legs and a head. However, they're not as effective as you might think. They're mostly made for earth energy and for capturing the the energies of your planet. Okay, thanks. Interesting. No, I've just been interested in symbols lately anyway. So, um, yeah, it's interesting. Yes, it's very interesting that the pentangle or pentagram or the five-sided symbols are, are imitations or representations of the body and can be used in earth energy to affect the, them as such. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So therefore, um, but there are some creatures and some beings that that would never work for. And even some that do have a head and two arms, there are creatures that have four arms, you know, and or some that have four legs or whatever. It may not work for those as well, but it works well with Earth energy and with work uh, with the Earth, the way it has developed from the beginning with mankind. And so that is why you use those particular uh, energies. Now, the other very powerful interstellar uh, um, <coughs> symbol is the triangle. It is 
a power symbol. And depending on how it is used, the triangle can be very, very effective in healing. It can be effective in other things as well. It's effective in technology in some ways as well. But the, the pyramids look like triangles from the side, but um, they are considered power symbols. We will be teaching you about the triangle and how it can be used. The Ruch is a very important uh, protection symbol which uses the triangle. And we will show you how to use that during the, uh, the um, uh, classes. Many times people are um, affected by the energy of the people that they are working on. Have you ever been doing healing with someone and you feel their energy and it's and, and it's too it's very strong for you and it's affecting the way that you're working has that ever happened to you anyone yes there of course yes times, there are times when especially if you are working in the galactic sense with different species and different kinds of individuals they have different kinds of energies. The rogue will protect you from their energy. You put up this protective barrier and their energy will not affect you as much. And we will teach you about that in the, the galactic class. And there are some humans that are very sensitive to other people's energies. So this, we have discovered it's a very helpful symbol for humans as well. It will protect you from energies, or it also it will protect you from diseases. If you have someone come in to your in to get a Reiki healing, and they have a cold or flu or something, you can or some kind of illness that is obvious. They do not look well, or they seem very sick. You have two options. You can send them home without a healing because you don't want to get sick. Or you can use the rogue. The rogue will protect you uh, about 90% from all the things that are coming off of them. So that's why we will teach you how to use it. On Earth, it's about 90% effective. On some places, it's 100%. Uh, but we figured that it is worth teaching since it is very effective, it's about 90% effective. So, um, and the energies of the earth have uh, changed and made it actually more effective than it had been maybe several years ago. So now the Roche will be taught and it is a protection against the energies and the things that are happening with your patients and clients. Any questions about that? And that uses a, a triangle, sort of a defense system, a power triangle, more than one, actually. We'll teach you about that. I have a question about that. So it's very, this symbol, rock, rock, that's how you pronounce it, it's very good for um, empaths, isn't it? Yes. Um, if you are protecting yourself, from gaining other people's problems or energies, it also blocks that. It blocks everything, pretty much, at about 90% on Earth. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. I cannot hear you. There's, you can, your voice is not heard. You are blocked. Turn your microphone on. Turn your microphone on. Do you see her, Max? Oh, perhaps she doesn't want to speak, right? I see. She is good. I was just me. I thought she was trying to say something. But then I started to read her lips, and she was saying, no, that's not what I want. 
So, um, all righty then. Um, that is a little bit of an introduction that I can give you. Is there any other questions, general questions about the class that you may want to learn? Nothing? I is that? I'm sorry. Hello. Hello. I want Greetings. to ask, but I think, okay. Is, is that class would be, would it be good also for 15 years old teenager? Uh, for a young 15 year old, is that what you're asking? Yeah, for my daughter, she's kind of old 15 years old, but. Um, yes. Actually, it would be good for children to learn. Any age group, can, if they are able to learn the symbols and able to understand what they do, anyone can learn this. Because we do have hybrid children learning galactic Reiki at this time. And some of them are as young as uh, four and five because they are able to understand the concepts of the healing and do the symbols very easily. Uh, <clears throat> if you feel that you have a child that would be able to understand the concepts of the healing and um, and uh, be a good healer, yes, I would not turn a child away. Any other questions? I would like to add this. This healing modality is effective on Earth. We have designed it so that it is, it is the symbols. They are the symbols that are only effective with Earth energy. Now, there's hundreds of symbols out there, and uh, some of them are just not effective in the Earth energies. Or... <coughs> they may need technology to make them more valid to Earth energies. And those are things we will not teach. We will not teach things that um, you cannot use readily or that are not effective immediately to you and cannot be attuned for. This is another thing. We only have symbols that we can attune to the human population. We do not have any symbols that will not, uh, that cannot be attuned to a human. They would be worthless on, on your planet. We may give you a little history about some of these at some point and, and why we are using them in the Galactic Reiki, but uh, the history of some of these symbols are very interesting and um, varied. Like, for instance, the, the history of the Ruch is also very old. Um, it, has been, it has several different variations, but the ones that we find are the most effective, we will only teach on Earth. And there is only one, the 90% the, the one is the only one we will teach. There is one that's effective about 68%. But why teach that one when there's one that's 90%? So we will make it s simple, as simple as possible, but we will also make it as interesting and universal and as healing as possible. These symbols will be very helpful to you, especially in the new age with the new energies. Very well, that's about all I have for today. Do you have any qu more questions? Other than that, I will be out. Um, <coughs> I have a question. Uh, yes. Uh, I, I normally do, Sai Baba had taught me a long time ago and uh, that from my heart, directly from my heart, I. I can I send source energy out. I connect right. with him, get the heart connected with him, and then I send the source energy out. And yeah. it has proved to be I've seen it on my son happening in in front of me. So how it, will these symbols uh, can help me? Uh, 
how we're connected. I, I have to ask, I mean, Baba about it, what, uh, you know, I'm yeah. talking and about There this. are some modalities that you will not need symbols for. There are people that are powerful enough to use their, use whatever healing energy they have without using a healing modality. Yeah. What a healing modality does is encourage people and give them more confidence to be healers. If you are already confident in your healing abilities, yes. if you already know how to use your healing abilities to the greatest effect, then there is no need to learn symbols as well. You can, you can be more pure than that in many ways. It is hard for people with their belief systems to believe that healing is possible in such pure ways, but all things are possible, and the symbols that we will use will give them the confidence and the energy to use what they have. You seem to have more healing energy than most. This the symbols increase the healing energy that comes from people once they are attuned to it. You understand, but if you do, if your energy is strong enough to heal without of uh, being enhanced or without the symbols, then that is a beautiful and wonderful thing. Well, I was not aware of it. I was just doing it. And there are many things uh, now I'm becoming aware of my being, you know, and many things that people have spoken to me. I couldn't understand all that. And I thought it was just normal. And I'm just yeah. beginning to be aware and to now manifest those. So I, I'm not sure. If somebody said, I want to heal this, um, what do I do? I, I would just send my heart energy, you know? Correct. So I would do now, it. some of these symbols <clears throat> would help you to be more, um, to more, be more localized in the sense that you would, if you were looking for, to heal somebody's throat or heart or, or thoughts, they would help you to concentrate on certain areas. But you have a general full healing, which is wonderful. And that is powerful on its own. Okay, so that would be great. So if somebody says, I've, I've got some lung issue or this issue, then I can use the symbol and con connect my heart energy to, to, the, sim to the symbol to the person, right? Mostly the, correct. The chokure, which means bring the energy here. You, you can bring that energy right to the lung area and concentrate your energy in that one place. Oh, okay. All right. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. That is what the symbols are for, to be more localized. Great, great. Maybe I can use that then. Yes. Um, Thank you so much. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, I wanted to ask about... Um, helping people to cross over when people leave their body. Um, yeah. Until recently, I, it, for me, it was mostly theory about other people. I never had experience myself. But recently, my uh, close friend died, and she chose to come to me instead of going right away on the other side. And uh, I didn't have a procedure. What, what actually do you do to help them to cross over? Well, first, if they are... If they are suffering, was, was she suffering or he? Um, I guess she suffered before the death, but not, not too long. Not too long. Well, there is a procedure that is known in the universe that is unwinding the chakras. You start at the root and you release the energy in each of the chakras as you move up the body until you get to the crown and then you re you release the crown energy and let them float off into uh, eternity and to head toward their next destination. Uh, she wasn't physically with me. It was her spirit already. Ah. Then you show her the light, where the light is. You close your eyes, you find it, and you just lead her toward it because that is... There's a welcoming committee for her already. Okay, so I feel her presence. I felt her presence the whole day. So it was, I, I was sure she was there. Yeah. And um, then I go into meditation. 
find the light for myself and take her energy and walk her to the light. Correct. Is it right? Well, there are those that choose to be around for a little while. I see. They want to make sure everything is in order. They want to make sure that things are right before they go. And there's nothing wrong with that. You find anything wrong with that? I'm pretty sure she was just confused. And I'm pretty sure she oh. wanted to speak, but I couldn't hear her. I, I, I felt her knocking on the door, uh, figuratively, but um, I, I couldn't hear what, what she was saying. Then I would just lead her. She probably knows where the light is, may, but if she seemed confused, lead her toward that area where you know that she needs to go. At the moment, I was at the class with a highly advanced spiritual teacher. So in the break, I just mentioned that to the teacher. And after the end of the class, the teacher said that uh, her guru in the spirit was the one who led my friend to the, to the light. Excellent. Then that was a good thing. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I saw her presence, but there was not much I could do at the moment. I, I was... Well, I, it's hard to give, give a reference on what to do in those situations because there are different situations. There are those that want to stay around for a little while to check on their loved ones, to make sure things are all right before they go. Mm -hmm. There are those that are sent into eternity very quickly and are confused or are confused because they they did not go directly to where they thought they were going to go and sometimes a little help is necessary yeah i'm pretty sure she wasn't ready to die she that was the last thing she said that you know i don't want to die <laughs> she i don't think she was ready to go <laughs> but it was it happened anyway it happened anyway right but she can go to the light and be part of it still. Even though she did not want to go, All right. she can still be led to it. Any more questions? Our time is over. I guess we can wrap up with a blessing. Does someone want to give a blessing? Or a hand. Anybody? I raise Do you want me to give a blessing? Wendy? Yes. Go ahead. Hi, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, you're good. Oh, finally. Um, I give the blessing of the guided angel. I don't know if you can see my hand. Yes. Gratitude. And I do it three times. And I give gratitude for the car and you, Max, for being who you are, um, helping me to connect from the past and moving to the future. Thank you. Great. And I say namaste and much love to all who are on this call. Thank you, Pakar. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. I will say a small blessing before we go. I want to thank God for the community that you have and the love that you share one to another and to bring your light into a greater brightness to fulfill all those things that God wants you to fulfill. To speak the words that you need to say and to be the example of light on earth that is necessary for you to continue into the next universe. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. All right. With that, we uh, close. And uh, we are planning at the same time, the same day, maybe every week, or we'll announce how often we will do that. Namaste. Thank you so Hello. much. Hello. Hey, hey, Jim. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. 
Do you want to do it next week? The same, same uh, to continue next week, or what? What's your plan? I don't know. I'll have to ask the girl if she wants to do that. Do any more? Okay. On that. But um, we'll have something planned. Okay. We can do something next week. So we'll... something about uh, we'll do something that will uh, give you an idea of what we're doing for the um, workshop. Maybe we'll do an introduction to channeling class or something. Okay. Oh, so we we plan. So at the same time, we just will announce the topic later. But the time is already decided, right? Right. Okay. So, um, yeah, we might do an introduction to channeling or an introduction to whatever you know, um, guided meditations, whatever. I love to do the channeling one. I would love to learn how to channel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what time would it be? One one o'clock. Twelve thirty next week, same time. And it the session will be called. I, I, uh, we're not sure yet. We're, we'll discuss it later, but okay. we'll pick a topic for t next week. Yeah, I'm new to the, <laughs> the, uh, you know, the site and everybody, so I'm enjoying it very much. So much love. Oh, know. wonderful. Thank you. All right, so join us again um, 12.30 in Eastern Standard Time, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday, a week from now. It is going to be, I think it would be 26, yeah, Friday 26, May 26th. And um, to join, you go to hukula.org. And uh, on jump page, there will be a link how to join. And this is for club members, so you would have to join the club. And it is $10 a month. All right? All right. Um, have a great day, everybody. Sakina, do you want to just stay here and we'll do our okay. session here? Yeah, that is fine with me. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. Oh, Mr. Jim, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, it's Wendy. Um, I know we wanted. I was. I did you send? Did you see my email? Yes, I did. I saw it today. And then I called you back and uh, sent you a message over the phone. So okay. I don't need Wait, we we need that. we need to reschedule your session time. Yeah, we didn't set up a time frame. That's the reason why I was saying that. Okay, I will listen to your time frame. Did you give it to me on the phone? No, I was going to leave it up to you because today um, I had um, a few uh, wait to go through, so I didn't want to do it today, but, you know. Okay, very good. Soon. We'll, we can... we'll set it up for this coming week sometime. What part of the week is good for you? Choose a day. Let's very clearly all right wonderful thank you